Hello friends, how's it going? My name is Dave Sereno, uh, singer, songwriter, producer, engineer, if you don't know by now. Um, today we're going to be talking about vocal placement and microphones. The proper way to place your vocalist while they're in their recording booth. Um, just little tics, uh, tips and tricks that you, you can use uh, in your own studios. All right. Uh, first things first, guys. You want to make sure we have the proper microphone. What's the proper microphone? My advice is to use a condenser microphone in the studio booth. Can you use a dynamic microphone? Yes, you sure you can. You can use any microphone you want to use. But I, I've noticed you get the best results from vocalists using condenser mics. That's debatable, but that's the way I use it. Uh, let's, let's look at some of the microphones we have. This is the AKG C3000B. This is what's called a condenser microphone. Okay, this is more than like this type of microphone is what you'll be using in your um you know in your studios when you're recording. Okay, this is this one right here. This was called a dynamic microphone. This is the Shure, the Shure microphone PG58. Um, you know if you have like bands coming in or whatever, you can use this to mic up the bands, the guitars, the drums, the drummers stuff like that. I wouldn't recommend using this uh, in the booth as your you know, main vocalist as you're singing. You can, but I don't really recommend doing that. This is another um, dynamic microphone, but as you can see, it has the quarter inch connector and uh, you have to connect it this way. I don't really recommend using this while you're recording vocals either. Um, so that's pretty much it for the microphones, guys. Uh, as far as hooking everything up, with the microphones, we have, uh, just give me a second, this cable right here is how you hook it up. Basically, you're going to uh, take this end, okay, and put it in this way, all right? Take the other end, and you're going to put it into your sound card, for example, the firebox. See, I got the firebox here. You're going to take the mic and put it in just like that, all right? Now, if you're using a microphone like this, the same thing, you plug it into the end and put it into the firebox, or if you're using something like this and you want to record, you're going to put the quarter inch into the inside of the mic, like that. That's also how you'll hook up your instruments. So you got a guitar that you want to go into there, or stuff like that, you, you would go in with the line inch, the quarter inch lines. Okay. All right. Let's talk vocal placement for a minute. First things first. You have to get what's called a pop filter. If you don't know what a pop filter is, guys, or you don't have a pop filter, pause the tape, pause the tutorial, go out the Guitar Center right now and get yourself what's called a pop filter. This is very basic, basic stuff, guys, but. I'm just going to go on over it for those who may not know or those who may have questions, okay? This is what's called a pop filter, and this is very, very important in your, in your studio. Uh, you don't want to record in the booth like this, you know what I mean? You want to make sure the pop filter goes over the mic like so. This uh, is very helpful, you know, as far as like distortion and stuff like that. If you don't have a pop filter, go get one right now. 20 bucks at Guitar Center, all right? Let's talk vocal placement. All right, let me, let me get in the booth. For those who have not seen my booth, here's my booth. Here's what it looks like when I'm recording my own self. All right, you got me? All right, uh, get a shot of the Bluebird. Can you, can you get in there? All right, this is my microphone. This is my baby. This is my favorite microphone. I love recording with this thing. It's the sweetest mic. I've ever heard, and I've, I've recorded on, you know, top of the line mics. I love this thing right here. It's, it's 500 bucks. It's called the Bluebird. It's beautiful. As you can see, um, what, what I forgot also was the cradle. You want to make sure that your condenser mic, this is a condenser mic, goes, it fits on a cradle like so. Usually when you buy a condenser mic, the cradles should actually come uh, with the microphone. Okay? So you can see, it'll fit like so. Make sure that you have a mic stand as well. I mean, it's basic stuff. But make sure you have a, have a mic stand as well. 
you have your microphone and your cradle. The cradle gets screwed on to uh, some kind of some device on the mic stand, and as you can see, I have it hooked up there. Okay. So let's talk about vocal placement. Once you have everything set up, situated as far as your mic stand, your cradle, your mic's fitting on there, your mic's hooked up into your going into your sound card. I got my reflection filter here. All right. You notice I have my pop filter right in front of the mic. Okay. I have my headphones in my vocal booth. As you can see, some people might say, "How do you get your headphones to fit all across the room?" This is the how. You, this is how I do it. This is with a headphone. The headphones is not going into the uh, firebox, as you as you can tell. What's what I'm doing is I have a, a it's like a it's called, I don't know what this is called, but it's like an extension cord kind of thing. I put the headphones into this piece here, and it's about 20 feet. This little cable, and it fits into my sound card all the way across the room. So that's how I get my headphones where I can record here and my engineers all the way over there. All right. So let's talk vocal placement. When you have your vocalist in the booth, you want to make sure you have them recording uh, at a great, at a good distance. Okay, you don't want to be too close to the mic like this. That's no good. That's no good. Why? Because that's going to cause distortion. That's going to cause messiness in your recordings. You're not going to get a good, clean sound from your recordings. You don't want to record all the way back here either. Why? <laughs> Because you're, you're, barely, you're not going to be able to hear your vocalist. So what you want to do is the pop filter should be like a, about maybe six, six to eight to ten inches away from the mic. You want to make sure the vocalist is the same, kind of in the same position. I, the good starting point is about six inches away from the mic. So for example, the pop filter is about eight inches from the mic. The vocalist should be about right here. Okay? Right here. If you notice when you're recording the vocalist that they're getting too loud... You want it, You might want to pull back a little bit like this, or a little bit like this. Okay. If they're getting, if they're too soft, then you really can't pick them up. You might want to get a little closer. Also, you do you do not want to uh, sing directly into the mic. I mean, depends on how sensitive or hot your mic is. What I usually do is I tilt my microphone a little bit. So instead of keeping it like straight, I usually will tilt it just a little bit on like an angle. Okay, and then I have the vocalist, you know, singing straight into it while it's on an angle. That's a good technique I use for my recordings. Okay, if you did not understand that, if I was going too fast, please feel free to rewind and go back. Uh, how much time we got left on the tape? Seven minutes. All right. Real quick, I want to talk about real quickly. Also, a very good technique. It goes hand in hand. It's called. Um, I'm not, sure if, I'm not sure if you can see this, but you want to make sure that usually if you have an uh, a interface like the Firebox, I, I'm using the Apogee Duet now, but usually what you want to do is you can control everything within the, uh, the Firebox or uh, Apogee Duet or the Sound Cards Mixer, all right? Usually when you have your, you can control your microphone through the gain. The Firebox gain goes up to, I think, 67 or something like that, or 62, I'm not really sure. Uh, the Duet goes up to, I think, 70, let's see, 